Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. If your saw is kind of leaning to one side, don't get bent out of shape. Today we're going to look at how do you fix it. So a common problem with panel saws and hand saws is that, well, they don't always end up being straight. You can see this one has a good bit of bend in it, somewhere right around here. And unfortunately, that happens quite a bit because people are just pushing too hard or they're stored improperly and left bent. Well, the nice thing is they're pretty easy to fix. First thing you want to do is look down the saw and see where is it bent. And this one is bent right about there, and it's bent in this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that as the center of the bend. I'm going to put my hand right on that, and I'm going to bend this thing over. And I'm going to like really crank on this. And a lot of people are really afraid that they're going to over crank it. And this time, actually, I cranked it just a little bit too far. Bend is still right about there, but I need to go back the other way. So I'm going to do that just a little bit, and a little bit less. Not much. Perfect. And now just a hair more. There, now we have a perfectly straight saw. And now you can look down that saw and see, yeah, that's what we want. Really nice and straight and clean. With panel saws and hand saws, it's just that easy. They're made out of spring steel, and so you can really crank them around. A lot of times you have to bring the tip all the way back until it touches the handle. Uh, you're not going to hurt it as long as you're doing a consistent bend. You're actually just going to bend it one way, and you can bend it back the other way. And if you bend it too far, then you just bend it back, and it's not going to hurt the plate at all. You can bend it quite a bit without having any issues in this at all. But that's a gradual bend. What happens if it's kinked, if there's a point that it's bent rather than just a bend over a certain distance? A kink in a saw is, well, it might be the end of the saw's life. That's one of the few things that can really hurt a saw. If the kink is right up by the tip, well, then you can just cut it off and make the saw a little bit shorter. But if it's in the middle of the saw, it's one of those things that is really, really hard to fix. If you don't know what you're doing, you probably have about a 50-50 chance of fixing it. And the other 50 of that 50-50 is just completely destroying the saw. So yeah, if it's already trash, you might want to take your hand at it and try it. Uh, but you might not. If it's a collectible saw, you might want to just leave it as is or try and find someone who has a little bit of experience in that. And even someone with a good bit of experience, there's still a chance you're not going to be able to fix a kink out of a saw plate. To fix it, you're going to need a ball-peen hammer. What this ball-peen shape does is when it hits the metal, it actually spreads it on one side. So if it was kinked, I'd have the kink pointing up, and I'd come in here and i just tap but on the metal. I don't want to do it on this because I don't want to kink a plate that's actually really nice. It works best if you have an anvil to do it against rather than wood, but if you don't have an anvil, you can do it on wood. Just be a little bit careful and uh, you need to have less pressure on it. It's not about hitting the plate, it's about working it slowly and just a bunch of taps just constantly going on it. And I've, I've done it a couple times, and a couple times I've, 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 I've not done it. Um, it's one of those things that, yeah, generally, if you find a saw that has a kink in it, it's trash. Throw it out, get another one. Uh, yeah, unless it's really special. There's other things you can do with a saw plate than use it as a saw. So what happens if I have a bend in a back saw? Because I can't just crank this over. There's a back on it to keep it stiff. If there's a bend in the back itself, it's trash. You need a new back, you need to rework the saw. There's basically no way you can fix that. If the back is bent, yeah, um, find a different saw. Technically, yes, you can fix it, but the amount of work and the, the chances of it actually working are so slim that uh, it, it's just not worth even attempting. But sometimes you'll notice that the back is straight, but the teeth are wavy. And what that means is that it's not seated all the way down into the back. Thankfully, that's really easy to fix. You want to set the back down on the bench, you want to lift it up and you want to hit the back all at once. When it all hits, that will drive the whole plate down in and will take that waviness out. So usually it's just... And you'll find that the waviness corrects itself. This is generally done best on a folded back. If you have a cut slot back where it's been glued in place or riveted in place, you can't do that. Uh, so if you have a back saw that it has a cut slot, um, you're kind of out of luck and it's usually going to hold itself together better so you have less chance of it bending with a cut back saw that's glued in place however if it does ever bend you're kind of stuck it's one of the nice things about a folded back is you have some flexibility in there it's just pinching the plate so the plate can move around and you can make adjustments here you can see the difference between a folded back 
and a cut back. A cut back just has a slot cut into the bar of steel, whereas a folded back is actually folded. This will pinch the blade, whereas with this, the plate sits in it and then has to be glued in place or riveted or held with some other connection. You can pinch it a little bit, and sometimes the cut backs will allow you to do that, but the folded back is generally considered to be the better of the two because it gives you that flexibility. So if you look at the tip of the saw, you can see this one over here is a folded back, and this one is a cut back. So the folded back is usually a little bit better. Um, the, don't hold that against the cut back. These can be really, really good saws. They just don't have quite the adjustability that a folded back does. So if you're out saw shopping and you come across a panel saw or a plate saw that's really, really nice and looks good, but oh my, it's bent a little bit. Well, it's really easy to fix. You can just crank it back over and you can fix it. And I probably cranked it a little bit later, so I'm gonna do it like this way and I fixed it back the other way. And now I've got a nice, true, clean, straight saw good to use, and they're surprisingly easy to fix. If you have one with a folded back, uh, they're generally very, very easy to fix. If they are ones that are held in place with a rivet or a screw, there's probably less chance that they're going to go out of flat, but if they do, you're kind of up a creek without a paddle because there isn't an easy way to fix them. So with general bends, don't be afraid to tweak them. It can take a lot of force. Sometimes on these plates, if I really need to, I'm gonna actually put it down here, and I'm gonna bend this handle all the way back around to the toe. You're not gonna hurt the saw, you're just gonna find that, oh, I actually bent a little too far, so now I gotta bend it back the other way, and if, as long as I do the same amount, I'm gonna take that bend back out, and now, got a straight saw. Fixing saws can be just that easy, and I hope this helped you out. If you have other questions or things that I didn't cover, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, this is one of those topics where, yeah, you could go into it a lot more, um, and if I could talk about actually peening saws, uh, this could be a very, very long video because that's a very in-depth thing. You could do a bunch of different ways. And generally, I'm going to tell people if the saw is kinked, get a different one. It's not worth the time and trouble of trying to fix it. Unless it's a really, really valuable saw, it's just not something that's worth diving into. So I hope that helped. Let me know your thoughts, comments, ideas down below, as well as hitting like, share, subscribing. Those comments do help the channel out. Thank you. Those do get us in front of more people. They help the algorithm. They help the channel to grow. And it means a lot. It's a great way to say thank you. If you want to take it one step farther, you'll notice that there are a whole bunch of people scrolling over here on the side. Those are patrons on Patreon. They are the people who are financially helping this channel and keeping us going. As well as members here on YouTube who've clicked that little join button down below. We have special perks for both members and patrons. And I do want to say thank you because without members and patrons, this channel wouldn't exist. We are completely sponsored by you, the viewer, and that means a lot to me. I hope it does to you. If you have any thoughts about uh, Patreon or becoming a member, you can click the little join button or become a member down below uh, in the information in the description. But you know how that works. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. I hope this video wasn't too kinky. I, uh, well, I, I don't want some people to get bent out of shape.